Hi everyone, thank you for dropping in on our Tuesday TNT. Now we will be following up on, I suppose what I'm calling the uh, good guys in, bad guys out 2.0 uh, a little bit later on the program. Big thanks to Five Star Marine, by the way, fivestarmarinephuket.com. A great way to get out and about on Pangar Bay from the island of Phuket. Highly recommend Sean and his team. But we'll go to this story. It's from nationthailand.com and it's headlined Thailand Eyes Special Visas for Digital Nomads to Fulfill Its Digital Hub Dreams. So I was thinking, oh, Digital Nomad Visa, about time, let's see what's going to happen. And the Digital Economy and Society Minister said his ministry will seek a special visa for so-called digital nomads in a bid to woo foreign AI experts to work in Thailand. Seems to be some general assumption that digital nomads know a lot about AI. I would have thought the two situations were mutually exclusive. But at a seminar entitled AI Revolution 2024, Transforming Thailand's Economy, Prasert said the country requires some 100,000 experts for artificial intelligence related jobs. However, he said the country only has some 21,000 AI experts at present. And he said that the Digital Economy and Society Ministry will cooperate with the Board of Investment to seek a special visa for AI experts and people with advanced computer skills under a so-called Global Digital Talent Visa Project. Well, if that's what you're looking for, you already have a visa for that. It's called the Smart Visa. Currently covers some five different occupations. One of them I think thought sort of covers this anyway, but if you want one specifically for AI, just add it to the smart visa. Uh, I don't think this has got anything to do necessarily or specifically with digital nomads. And he said once the BOI has worked out the details of the special visa, the ministry will submit it to the cabinet for approval as soon as possible. And the subcommittee will be in charge of implementing AI policy, so Thailand has a clear operational plan for investing in AI infrastructure, such as building data centres, cloud centres and high-performance computers. Well, that seems to be a perfectly good idea, but as I said, I don't think it's got much to do with a digital nomad specifically. What is a digital nomad? Well, let's ask the biggest AI platform at the moment, ChatGPT, and it says... Digital Nomad is an individual who uses telecommunications technologies to earn a living and, more generally, conduct their life in a nomadic manner. Digital Nomads often work remotely, leveraging the internet to perform their job duties, allowing them to travel and live in different locations around the world while maintaining their work responsibilities. So a visa for them, I think, is something that the Thai government should think about. Uh, not really covered in that uh, other story, despite the headline. But there has been a lot of discussion about who is coming to Thailand at the moment, uh, the trouble that some of them are making here in Thailand, the deportations, the crime, and it's not only making a lot of waves in social media, but also at uh, the top level of Thai officialdom. And covered in this article from Phuket-Go.com, strictly screened foreigners entering and leaving the kingdom. This is a direct quote from the Deputy Chief of Police. And as Thailand's tourism industry roars back to full speed and attracting many new nationalities to the land of smiles, there's been a noticeable uptick in cases reported in involving foreigners violating the law. Statistically, the article says the rise has not been significant, but the reporting and social media frenzy over recent incidents is spurring the police and Thai immigration officials into a reactive stance. Now police claim that some of the recent cases pose significant threats to societal order and a deputy chief of the Royal Thai Police is taking decisive action. He's publicly issued a number of public directives to the Commissioner of Immigration mandating stricter enforcement of immigration laws and he says that it's come to light that certain individuals from abroad have unlawfully entered Thailand with hidden agendas. And these individuals have demonstrated a blatant disregard for Thai laws and their presence in the country has proven to be detrimental rather than beneficial. And their actions have inflicted harm upon Thai society, economy, politics and national security. And in the past, the then Deputy Commissioner of Thai Immigration, Surachat Hakpan, coined the phrase, good guys in, bad guys out. 
These new directives are a more specific and aggressive gesture towards foreigners living in Thailand that have short-circuited the immigration laws or visas. Now, before we go to the next article, we should historically remember that these purges happen from time to time, and not only in Thailand, it happens with immigration policies right around the world. There's a, a focus on a particular story or a group of stories, and there's a response, a, a knee-jerk reaction, and then things tend to die down. So don't just assume that this purge is going to last forever or if it's going to affect every single person. It's not. It's clearly aimed at people that are trying to short-circuit the, uh, the system. And that takes us to this story from cowshotenglish.com. Thai police require monthly case reports and stricter foreigner screening. And there are three points here. They're going to strictly screen foreigners entering and leaving the kingdom. And this includes consideration of applications for extensions of stay, visa stamping and changes in visa status. And number two, investigate and prosecute all crimes committed by foreigners. Well, that sort of goes without saying. And that includes violations of the Immigration Act, the Alien Employment Act. Uh, that means B visas and work permits, and the Entertainment Places Act, illegal business operations, and nominee arrangements where Thai nationals hold shares or real estate ownership on behalf of foreigners to avoid legal compliance. Now, if they truly crack down on that particular issue, there would be a lot of alleged buyers and also the real estate agents that sold them those properties that would be scurrying for their paperwork at the moment. And number three, revoke the stay permits of foreigners who are found to be staying in the kingdom without a legitimate reason, that seems fairly arbitrary, or who have other behaviours that warrant the revocation of their permits. So again, 99% of people coming here as tourists or staying here long term, this isn't going to affect you. But they are obviously having some sort of closer look at some visas at the moment. And Barry Kenyon from patiomail.com has also written an article on this. And it's entitled, First Signs of Concerns About Visa Exempt Mass Tourists, using a screenshot from that incident with the two Kiwis and the uh, policeman down in Chalong Phuket. In recent months, there's been alarming reports about foreigners attacking Thai nationals, gambling in illegal casinos and working without authorised permits. In recent months, in recent years, we always have these reports, but there has been a particular focus over recent times. Equally worrying to law enforcers is the apparently widespread practice of owning real estate or establishing business enterprises via use of Thai nominees, which is an illegal practice. So that article continues on, but uh, plenty of coverage about this particular issue. As I said, I'm calling it uh, Good Guys In, Bad Guys Out 2.0, and I'm sure we're not finished with that story yet. Now, just uh, quickly, although we don't cover international news specifically, we should mention that the Thai government has responded to the terrorist attack in Moscow over the weekend. Thailand condemns Moscow terrorist attack and offers condolences. And in a heartfelt statement released, well, that would be yesterday, Thailand expressed its profound shock and deep sadness over the tragic terrorist attack that occurred in the Moscow region on March the 22nd. The devastating event led to the loss of many lives, with many people also injured. The Thai government strongly condemned the brutal and heinous act stating that such violence against innocent civilians is unacceptable and Thailand unequivocally condemns this attack and all forms of terrorism. Thailand extended its deepest condolences to the families of the victims and assured that the Thai people stand in solidarity with the Russian people during this challenging time. And between expressing his condolences, uh, he was a busy man in Parliament yesterday. Thai PBS World reporting, Senator begins debate against government today with scathing attack on the PM. Well, this was all happening yesterday and it was a withering attack. Let's go into some of the specifics. And the Senator kicked off the Senate's general debate against the government by criticising the Premier for acting like a salesman during his overseas visits, eroding the justice system by applying the law of the land selectively and in favour of certain individuals and underperforming without any tangible achievements, among other failures. Let's go into some of those specific issues. Regarding the PM's overseas visits to promote investment in projects in Thailand, 
Seri said the Prime Minister should act like a CEO and should let the Commerce Minister be the salesman, adding that he has no intention to insult salespeople. Uh, commenting on the controversial digital wallet scheme, the Senate said that the 10,000 baht to be distributed to all Thais who are at least 16 will be spent in just one month and it will not help stimulate the economy. He also accused the government of the selective application of the law in favour of a certain convict, apparently referring to Tax and Shinawat. And then he saved his best for last. He said, uh, well, the senators do, however, want the government to complete its term. But unfortunately for the country, there are few competent and incorrupt people in the government, while the opposition appears bent on overthrowing the constitutional monarchy. Oh, he was having a go at just about everybody. But let's see what the Prime Minister said in response, also reported. And the PM responds to senators' criticism during the general debate and he defended his overseas trips and visits to neighbouring countries as being necessary to boost foreign investment in Thailand. And he said even if he is abroad or out of Bangkok, he can still manage state affairs and delegate without any problem, thanks to communications technology. So that no confidence debate will continue. Sure, the senators have got more guns in their armoury to fire at the current coalition government. Then again, it was the senators that voted in this coalition government. To some other news today, heading to BangkokPost.com, government urged to cut power tariff and the Consumer Council is urging the government to temporarily lower the power tariff that is used to calculate electricity bills in an effort to reduce the burden on households during the hot summer months when demand typically spikes. Well, it certainly spiked in our household, went up nearly three times this month, and I think we've got a few more hot months ahead. And the call comes after the Energy Regulatory Commission, which sets the rates for electricity bills, proposed three potential adjustments to the existing power rate. The call comes after the Energy Regulatory Commission, which sets the rates for electricity bills, proposed three potential adjustments to the existing power rate, but none of which would result in lower electricity bills for households. And the TCC is urging the government to reduce the power tariff from 4.18 baht per kilowatt hour to 3.99 baht per kilowatt hour between May and August this year. Well, if you're going to make some demands, make some bigger demands than that, that's uh, hardly going to change many people's electricity bill. And the TCC also urged authorities to roll out better incentives to attract more people to install solar panels at home. Well, I'm a big fan of solar power, but here in Thailand, for whatever reason, it seems still quite uh, expensive to install. Did the sums on installing solar power on three of the beach houses, especially for the air conditioning during the day, wouldn't have to install batteries, it's really just a daytime problem. But uh, no, the, the cost was prohibitive. It would have taken nearly a decade to, to pay that back. And as I said, it does look like we've got more hot weather on the way. BangkokPost.com reporting high temperatures to linger until April. Uh, I've always loved that photo, a very, very Thai photo with all the motorcyclists finding any bit of shade whilst they're out on the road. And the TMD is warning the public, especially those living in the country's northern regions, to brace for higher than average temperatures, which are expected at the end of the month and will last until early April. And it's usually April the 13th or Songkran, the Thai New Year, when typically that's the end of the hot season and it's the start of the wet season. Now, depending on where you are in Thailand, it may start a few weeks after or a few weeks before. But uh, pretty much during the last couple of weeks in April, we'll start seeing some rain for the annual wet season. Now, let's just check the uh, PM 2.5 problem today. And we check with iqair.com. And again today, well, when I did the screen grab, Chiang Mai, number four in the list of the most polluted cities in the world that we're talking about air pollution and the PM 2.5 uh, readings. And just going to the map and we can see I've put an X where Chiang Mai is and got a lot of air pollution problems around there. Also in the northeast of Thailand, put a big red circle around the Isan region, the arrow pointing to Bangkok for a bit of context.
So the burning season continues, not only up in uh, northern Thailand, but of course also in those neighbouring countries and the border areas. And according to the TMD, looks like it's going to be very hot for at least another month. Well, that's uh, some of the main stories from around Thailand today. Now, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Big thanks to our sponsor, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinephuket.com. The very, very best way to head out on a bespoke private tour to the islands of Pangar Bay. Uh, please drop in again tomorrow and we'll see you then.